Hey guys, it's Eric. Uh, today I want to talk about Kodak Portra. Portra is a color negative film from the Kodak Film Company of Rochester, New York. Now, Portra, as the name would indicate, is designed with portraiture in mind. Uh, and the reason for this is it's a super neutral looking film. I did a video about a year ago, I'll link to it right here, where I did some portraiture overexposing portrait by a couple of stops. And the reason being for that, you get this kind of creamy, um, washed out, dreamy look to it. You don't necessarily have to do that. What I want to do today is get into what the film is, uh, what its uses are, what you can expect from it, and then show you some examples that I've shot on 35mm, 120, and actually some 4x5. So let's go. I've heard Portra described as a, kind of a vanilla film, and I can understand why people feel that way, especially like when I made the Ektar video, my greatest hit. <laughs> um, I had a lot of people comment that like, Ektar has character, Portra is like boring, everybody likes it, and I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that if Portra were truly a neutral, truly a vanilla film, it would give you looks that, that kind of resemble what you get out of your cell phone or your DSLR when you take photos. And I don't think it does. I think it does have a really unique character to it. Now, Portra, like I said, it's a color negative film. It comes in three different flavors. You can get it in 160, 400, and 800 speed. Now, I've only shot the 160 and the 400, but according to Kodak's website, uh, as you increase in ASA and in, in film speed, you're going to increase in grain and you're also going to increase in saturation. So, you know, the 400 is grainier and more saturated than the 160. If you go on like Flickr or 500px and look up stuff shot on Portra, what you're going to find more than anything is portraiture. And the reason for that, I think, is twofold. Uh, one, it's got an incredible dynamic range. You get a ton of detail in the shadows, a ton of detail in the highlights, especially in the highlights. It's very, very forgiving. If you're looking for like punchy colors or high contrast, probably not the film for you. But if you're looking for something that is easy to use and is going to give you a really beautiful, kind of smooth, creamy look to your images, Portra is the one, for sure. Beyond that, Portra is really good for skin tones. And specifically when, when you say that, you generally mean like uh, Caucasian and Asian skin tones. If you find yourself photographing people with lighter skin, uh, films like Ektar or uh, Velvia are going to saturate their skin and give them kind of a sunburned look. It's not ideal, it's not super flattering. Portra is going to give you a really honest, natural look. So um, skin tones, uh, scenes where you need a lot of dynamic range, you'll find that if you're shooting things around sunset and you don't have like a, a neutral density filter, even for landscapes, Portra can be a good option. You can punch it up in post if you want because it'll retain that detail in the sky while giving you the detail in the shadows where something like Ektar would blow out one or the other. So what I want to do now is show you some photos that I've taken on Portra on a number of different formats. Uh, some of them are pushed, some of them are developed normally, some are overexposed, some are shot at box speed. Just kind of want to give you an idea of what the film looks like and what you can expect from it. So uh, I'll see you on my computer. <laughs> okay, so the first set of photos here, these were all taken in Buffalo. Uh, these were taken primarily on my Canon Canonet uh, rangefinder, but these are all 35 millimeter Portra 400 uh, metered at 800 and pushed to stop. So um, I took the 400 speed and shot it like it was 800 and then had the lab develop it that way. You know, I think they look great. You know, you retain that nice pastel look that Portra is famous for. You got that beautiful dynamic range. And I mean, for being developed at 800, I feel like the noise is still uh, pretty much in check, um, especially since these are, you know, 35 millimeter scans. I think they look pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, these next couple here, now these were shot on my RB67, so this is uh, 6x7, 120. These were, I did these as a favor for some friends. These were engagement photos, and, uh, you know, it's it's totally subjective, of course, but I think they look great. <laughs> uh, and that one especially, you can really see the dynamic range. I just use reflector in the sunlight there. Um, and this right here, RB67, again, this was intentionally overexposed and developed at 400. Uh, to give you that kind of washed out look, this is South Buffalo, aka uh, the Thunderdome. Uh, same role here, you know, 6x7 
uh, one twenty. Someone told me in Flickr which building this is, but it is it is very cool. Uh, six by seven one twenty. You might recognize this. Uh, this is from the video I did a year ago with my sister. She actually took this one, so pretty good, you know, all things considered, with what she had to work with. <laughs> um, and uh, this is uh, a photograph from that video. I'll link to that video. I'll also link to uh, the Flickr albums with these photos. In the but you can see, you know, this is overexposed by a couple of stops, and it looks just beautiful really really impressive i just love the way that the film looks the way it renders skin tones and uh such now this one here this is a four by five image and the exposure is not quite right but i just wanted to include it to give you an idea of this as a landscape film uh, but yeah there you have it there's some portrait like i said i'll link to the flicker uh, album with a bunch of these photos in them. Uh, coming up, uh, Return to Ektar, uh, more slide film. Definitely some 4x5 film. I, I, uh, I'm going to take that up into the Adirondacks and do some work soon. So it uh, should be some fun videos. It's summertime. I'm excited to go out and, and shoot some film. So um, if you're interested in any of that stuff, uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscription. It makes a huge difference. I appreciate all your comments, guys. I will be back soon. Have yourselves a great weekend, okay? See ya.